Hey everyone, my name is Clayton. So I just finished my last exam as of filming this today. Um, so I guess this is my last appearance at UCM for a little while. Um, but yeah, being that it's coming to the end of a season for me, I've been dwelling a lot on what God is calling me to in my life. And so that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today in this devotion. Um, in the Bible, we see many examples of God calling his people to him and calling strangers to him. So I want to talk about those things. Um, his call into relationship with him, the call uh, of discipleship, the call to trust in him, and the call to continually be turning back to God. So for every Christian, the, our faith story begins with the exact same thing, God calling us to him. We see this uh, as a good example uh, with Jesus and his disciples. In the first few chapters of Mark, we can read about God calling his first disciples where it says that as passing along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. This is repeated again with Andrew or James and John, sorry, like in the next paragraph. And then in Mark 2, just at the bottom of the page, it says, that and as Jesus passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting in the tax booth, and he said to him, Follow me. And he rose and followed him. These two stories are interesting because we can see in John's account that Peter, or Simon, and Andrew um, followed Christ for a little while, uh, probably from around uh, John the Baptist kind of introduced them, and they'd been following them around for a little bit. But at this point, Jesus is calling them not just to be casually following him, as many others were doing at the time, but to actually come and live their lives, abandoning everything they have and follow him. Um, which is a little bit different with Levi, where he's just kind of going along his normal day. He's a tax collector, uh, wasn't expecting anything, wasn't following Jesus, but he called and the, the same answer was given. Um, and this was, I've been reflecting on this a lot over the last year. I was reading uh, The Cost of Discipleship by Dietrich Bonhoeffer. And in it, he kind of, he, he wrote this thing that I thought was pretty interesting where he says, But now he has come, his call has gone forth. But faith can no longer mean sitting still and waiting. They must rise and follow him. So yeah, as Christians, we're given this opportunity where we can either, when God calls us to him, we either follow him or we don't, but we don't have another option to just sit by. So God calls us into relationship with us, with him, but we all, he also calls us to serve alongside him. Um, we see this in, this is an area that I've definitely struggled a lot with. I think God often has called us to things that are scary and we see that in the Bible, but often when it applies to us, it's a little bit different, I guess. Um, but yeah, we can read the Great Commission in Matthew 28, where Jesus says, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of the nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. We see that Jesus calls call to him has a co-requisite of service which is a remarkably gracious thing. As broken sinners, we have the opportunity to serve alongside the one true perfect God in his ministry. There's a lot of ways I know that I justify against serving. Um, I often say to myself, I'm too busy, not prepared, not good enough, or really have nothing to offer. But as Christians, we know that it's not on our strength, but on God's strength that we're called to work alongside of him. So yeah, in this call of discipleship, there are many times where it gets tough, um, but God also calls us back to him, to trust in him, to confess and to bring our sins to him, and to receive his forgiveness. We see stories like Hebrews and Corinth and Ephesus, where these churches are looking into the cultures around them and, and seeing what they have to offer and thinking, I don't know if this Christianity is great, all this persecution and um, this different life that we're being called to, but um, God still calls them to trust in his good plan, that he is wanting our best, and it is in our best interest to actually follow him. <clears throat> yeah, so throughout the book of Isaiah that I've been reading through recently, God is calling people to repent and to remember all the good that he has promised them and how he's delivering them. He often asks them, is my hand shortened that I may not deliver you? God is 
God calls us back, and it is a beautiful thing that he does this not only when we are pursuing him, but often, probably more often, when we're actually running away from him. In Isaiah 59, there's this beautiful prophecy of the coming Christ entering into our broken world um, without any real reason to. But it says, The Lord saw it, and it displeased him. There was no justice. He saw that there was no man, and wondered that there was no one to intercede. Then his own arm brought in him salvation, and his righteousness upheld him. He put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and wrapped himself in cloak as of zeal. And a redeemer will come to Zion, and those in Jacob who turn from transgressions, declares the Lord. So God is calling us to him. He has many calls in our lives, um, but it is what we were created for. We read that in John, that this is eternal life. That is that they know you, the one true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So God is calling us, and we can no longer sit idly by. So over this next little time, bit this week, month, however long we're all in quarantine here, may you take some time and just think, what way is God calling you? So is he calling you into a deeper relationship with him or into a relationship for the first time? Um, are there ways of he is calling us to serve him, and whether that's through core leading or just reaching out to someone in your class, taking that step of faith? Um, yeah, but are there ways that he's calling us to that we're resisting him? Yeah, so also another couple of questions are, do you truly, do you trust him enough to truly surrender everything to him? Are we holding anything back saying, God, you can have everything, but just not this? Um, and the last question that I kind of thought of was, are there things that God is calling you to repent and turn back from? So I hope you guys all have a good week and are powering through exams. Keep going. Look forward to seeing you all again soon.